First up, we have the FCC East region. Um, starting off, we have Virginia. So we have one pretty notable qualifier that we could find on January 11 in Richmond's, Richland. Excuse me. Um, the event was won by the third-ranked captain, which is pretty unique, really. A lot of times it's first or second ranks that win events. Um, that alliance was 87, 88, 105, 15, and 49, 24. Um, I don't believe 300 points were broken at that event specifically, but it's hard to account for like issues with robots and stuff like that. I feel like our robots always break when we're with good teams, so sometimes it happens. We saw a lot of double lift robots at this event. Um, I think like two or three of the robots in finals were an intake extension lift and then a scoring lift. So that ended up being pretty cool. So on the Red Alliance, it looks like they hit one sample and got one team marker. And then their partner just did, let's see, a 60-point auto, so or tried to. Missed their gold sample. And then, yeah, you can kind of see this laser-cut wood robot on the right on the right hand side of the Red Alliance is kind of an interesting pivot arm robot that reminds me a lot of Iowa's BZ bots, um, where they score out of the same time as, side as they intake. And yeah, there was, yes, on the Blue Alliance, we have a more traditional kind of double lift robot with a dedicated scoring lift and a dedicated intake lift. Looks like we have a couple of those robots just kind of working at the game. Looks like they may have had some issues with their vertical lift. But yeah, a very simple transfer of just rotating a wrist on their vertical extension into their scoring bucket, which ends up being really simple and a lot of times simple designs are pretty effective yeah i think that this year like uh some the teams especially the more lower resource teams have really figured out how to how to score how to score these minerals right because like i always like if you guys have been watching the show you know how i always draw the parallel between this year's game and rescue um and in rescue like teams especially the lower resource teams the teams who weren't as good um they they just didn't go for it. They just went for the hang, the auto, and um, that's about it, right? But this year, I think that even these teams that aren't able to like do as much with like the double the double lifts, the double linear slides, um, are able to score because they're they're having more ingenious ideas. And generally, like the competition as a whole is getting better. And like back in rescue, if you saw like a not really notable team scoring well in the high goal, that was weird. And they kind of became notable really, really quickly. Whereas I have never heard of these teams before. And they're all doing a pretty okay job of scoring in the lander. So it's that's pretty promising. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I definitely agree with you, Ethan. And I think one of the things that's forcing teams to do that is it's so much more valuable to score up there than it is into the um, cargo holds. Isn't that what they're called? The, the depots. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, de yeah, the, the depots holds. on the side. The details on the side is so much more valuable. Um, mm -hmm. And also, compared to the past years, it's not that hard, in my opinion, to score up there. All you really need to do is just have something that goes up, I think it's 30 inches, something about 30 yeah, or 2 yeah, inches. Yeah, 29, um, 30 inches. Yeah, and it's pretty easy to make a little claw that just goes back, or if you want a more complex mechanism, as we're seeing, uh, it's easy to do that. And another thing I've noticed is just teams are just getting better. As the years progress, I don't know if you guys would agree with me, but yeah. if you look back at rescue compared to now, the general trend is that everyone is better. Absolutely. Yeah. I definitely agree with what Shashir said on like lower resource teams getting uh, having like better designs and better uh, robots than previous years. I mean, that's definitely been like apparent in our league, and I'm really like happy with that. Hmm. So we can kind of move on to Maryland as our next event. We don't really have a lot of data for it on TOA. Um, the event, the, I'll let's see, I forgot to write down the name of the event, but we had a Red Alliance of 87.19 and 13.405. And they kind of just ran away with the event. The live score showed final matches of 3.23 to 2.17 and 3.01 to 1.71. We can pull up the video. We saw a lot of weird robots at this event, which is kind of... Pretty standard in Maryland. They like their weird robots, and I like that. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, we saw both alliances perform pretty well, really. really. Um, the really notable team that we saw 
that I don't have videos for in Maryland is 7182, who was the world's finalist first pick last year. That's Mechanical Paradox Cubed. They qualified for Maryland States a couple weekends ago, and they are really rocking it. We can see an exclusive match video from them a little later in our Pennsylvania recap. For this match, it was just four robots doing what they do. Nothing super notable, but they scored a decent amount of points. Yeah, I think Four. yeah, I think I think this year one another thing that we're seeing is that um, I thought there would be a lot more robot involvement interaction simply because the field was so tight and there there's like there's not much room for teams to do their own thing. But teams really are being are able to do their own thing, right? Like um, it's not as if there's too much contact. And um, personally, I thought that because of because of this field, mechanism wheels were just a no go because there was going to be so much contact. But like as we see the trending, the trends, it's it's really it's not that big of a deal right now. It's uh, every team has their own objectives and every team is able to achieve those objectives largely unhindered by their alliance partners and their opposition mm -hmm. and i felt a lot of the same way in like the first month of the season and then game manual update added gs11 which mm -hmm. basically just protects robots that are in between the silver cargo hold and the crater but isn't alliance specific so it kind of means that you almost have to drive back and forth between the silver cargo hold and the crater and or another robot can kind of just drive around onto your side and force GS11 without any robot-to-robot -robot contact. So mm, that rule that kind of true. both ways kind of made less robot contact, I think. Mm. I I personally thought it would make more robot contact because like you can use that rule for your advantage, but I agree with you that I'm not actually seeing that. It It's weird. It's a strange rule. Um, so it, yeah. Uh, moving on to Definitely. New Jersey, let's see. Since our last show, New Jersey has had three qualifiers for state championships. They're a little bit of a weirder state as they use both leagues and qualifiers. Um, there weren't really any events with data in New Jersey, and I did not find any videos. The one that had really notable scores in finals specifically was the Southern Scuffle on January 15th, where 99.71, 99.27, and 148.60 won finals one by 365 to 261, then finals two by 240 to 209. So Land rose back at it with being really good early season and showing that in their scores. So it looks like we have Coder Chris from the chat um, said, I completely disagree and have seen higher level matches with 7 Sigma and 5040, and they saw a lot of space contention with both partners and opponents. Um, I personally, I think we'll see a lot more robot to robot contact when we see kind of like in that case, seven Sigma is really good at running the gold cargo hold and mm -hmm. playing defense while they're running that. And I think when we see more robots get really good at doing that far creator strategy, we'll see a lot more robot <laughs> robot contact, but right and now, like early seasons normally dominated by teams who get really good at the slightly easier objective. We saw this a lot last year, and teams will run a lot of silver cargo holds and get really good at that. And then once we see really competitive teams kind of shift their focus to work well with other competitive teams, that will be a lot more common, I think. And uh, Coder Chris, like I think uh, if you're talking about like the West Virginia like state um, competition, then like that was like before GS11 was like updated, and so like there was more robot-to-robot -robot interaction during that competition as compared to now. So mm -hmm. I do see where you're coming from, though. Mm -hmm. Kind of jumping forward, Delaware, I didn't find anything. So, yeah. Uh, Pennsylvania is a big one that I think is shaping up to be what a lot of people are nicknaming mini-ESR because this is kind of the second East state that everybody likes invading. And especially this year, we see a lot of really, really good teams. So I'm excited to see Pennsylvania. Um, a ton of people have qualified already, including 7244 out of the box. The giant Diane Symphonic Brainstem Robotics team. The Gear Ticks, who were in Spire Nom at Worlds last year. 9956 at NAC, all the way from Wisconsin. And 10464, the Bionic Tigers, who are 5040's sister team. 
In addition to a match we're seeing right now, 7182 Mechanical Paradox Cubed. So they are really freaking fast. <laughs> like, everything about their robot is really fast, um, including their linear slides and both sets. We see angled lifts, which is kind of a newer trend in FTC, angled deposit lifts, and that really quick, quick horizontal extension. It's, it's really impressive. Something, another notable thing about their robot is it's all GoBuilda, which is fairly new this year. And it's cool to see another building system be pretty viable, especially because it sounds like we have an interview with them next week. Yep. So if you want to tune in next week at uh, 8.30 Eastern time, you can hear directly from GoBuilda's creators. Uh, they're going to have a ton of things to give away, and it will be a fun show uh, chatting with them. So <laughs> if you guys have any questions in advance, throw them in our Discord, and we'll make sure to ask them on air. Yeah, um, I think that... Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, say, just to... Go ahead. I was going to say, I agree with you, Ethan, that um, in looking at um, Mechanical Paradox Cubed Robot right there, um, that strategy of just a lift up and then the uh, automatic sorter just works really well. Uh, my team's even using an automatic sorter. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it's a great strategy. They look, a little similar, uh, they look a little similar to uh, Crack and Pinion with that angled lift going into score. So, yeah. Yeah, so basically, like, what I think is uh, Mechanical Paradox, uh, I feel like, and Cubic before them, they really had a strategy of, um, uh, of basically trying to improve their cycles as quickly as possible, uh, like, as much as possible, just, like, get everything to, uh, like, their entire robot was based on these cycle times, and I think that they're staying true with that basic, like, that high-level strategy, and this year, the best way for them to do that was having um, this uh, double slide system and uh, basically making everything as fast as possible, so I'm glad to see them sticking true to that and um, I haven't seen it failed yet so I think that they're going to be quite successful with this strategy mm -hmm. it's really cool to see um, and something like they had a sort of deposit which initially I know a lot of people weren't really super into they were really considering sorting at intake to being a lot more viable and after the season goes on like more and more often I see sorting at outtake being really good so it's interesting to see kind of a lot of people's opinions kind of got flipped on their head. Well, I think a sorting intake is just really hard to do compared to a sorting outtake. Um, mm -hmm. Because yeah, once yes. you already once you have two, it's easier to sort uh, on the drop than it is when you're coming in because you don't want to accidentally have more than two. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So moving on to New York, uh, I didn't find any match videos from them either, but we have a couple teams really setting the bar pretty high. Uh, New York is split into a lot of regions. It's like four or five off the top of my head. Um, the most notable among those was 8397 Beta, who is not new to the New York scene and currently has the high score with 11607 that has Matrix from, uh, let's see, that high score was 358 points. Um, just behind them, we have the ever notable Atomic Theory, Team 4174 rocking a 166 OPR and a high score of just over 230 points. I'm excited to see, as always, Atomic Theory also has, always has cool robots, and they have an awesome name. So they're going to be fun. Next up is Massachusetts, which is always really crazy. Um, we had a couple qualifiers that have happened so far that really have made some waves. Um, that were actually in the same venue, just back-to-back. -back. The first was the Sunday Battle of Lexington, featuring 110, let's see, 11100, uh, who was a division semifinalist at Detroit last year, and world's winners 8644, the Brainstormers. Brainstormers and 11100 won that event. Let's see. So it looks like our video isn't quite working, but that's all right. We had, let's see. 11100 was a, had two side by side claws, which was pretty unique. Um, and we actually have seen a few teams get really good at this, just having two little claws side by side. That reminds me a lot of uh, 10435 from last year, uh, which is a design that I never thought would be viable, <laughs> but surprisingly is. And then we have Brainstormers, who is kind of a traditional double lift 
with surgical tubing intakes and then a vertical lift to score. Um, the day um, before, oh, you can go. Oh yeah, Ethan, if I remember correctly, um, last year was like the last year for uh, like the break, like the old brainstormers team, and this year it's like a completely new brainstormers team. So that should be really interesting to see how it plays out. Mm -hmm. I know they've switched their shirt color to red, which is a big change. And I think they only have one holdover member from last year. Oh, wow. Year. wow. So, uh, with that, shift. Ethan, do you think they're going to be as successful as they were last year, coming off a pretty big season? I'm not sure. Uh, a lot of times with really good mentorship back from alumni in the program, you can keep really successful teams successful. So I, I would hope to see that that will come back. And we'll see some really good brainstormers next year. Overall, a lot of the really good teams in Massachusetts aren't quite as dominant this year, which is interesting to see kind of an entire region shift. Um, another notable qualifier happened the day before in the same event with 12589 Pioneer scoring seven to six to seven cycles, so 12 to 14 minerals. And pretty reliably, and swept the event with Lego Heads, who won second Inspire at the event. Let's see. I think that's most of all what well, all of I have, well, all I have for the East region. What do you guys oh. think? Um, yes. Ethan, are, are we going to be covering the uh, Natick qualifier? Natick I qualifier? did not get stuff for that qualifier, sadly. Um, I, I believe that's find in, anything online. That's in New York, right? Um... I am not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So, um, yeah, I think uh, well, we can probably cover that in future future um, FTC recap shows. Mm -hmm. And um... We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.